Hello and welcome back to our UE5 C++ tutorial series. In the first episode last time, we talked about how we create a C++ class and how to expose variables from the C++ source file into the editor for designers to use. Now, the other side of that coin is functions and events. So in this episode, we're going to go through how to set up functions and events and explain how that works and exposing those from the class into your Blueprint editor. So let's get started. So welcome back. Let's go back into our test actor that we started working on uh, in the first episode. And we set it up and showed you how to do properties. Now let's talk about uh, functions and how they get called. And they're very similar. So in your header file, you need to define what they are. So we're going to go to public here. And you do u function. So u property for variables, u function for functions. And again in brackets, we have a few arguments that we can pass through to this. Um, and we want it to be callable by blueprint. So we're going to do blueprint callable. And give it a category as well. And if you put give it a category, that means it will show up in the uh, right click context menu. So do get used to adding categories to these things. So we'll go test functions, we'll call this. And in here we'll define our function. Now with functions, you have to first of all define the return type. If it's not going to return anything, you just return it as void. If it's going to return a value, then you put in what type of value it's going to be. So for ex our example here, we're going to do uh, a, a void here. We'll do void and we'll do uh, calculate value. And I'm going to give it another variable. So you property here, we're going to change this to edit anywhere. And blueprint read write. Uh, read, right, and get rid of transient, and leave it as category there. So that'd be value. I'm going to do value A, and then I'm going to copy this and put another one in for value B. Uh, there we go. Okay. So we've got value A and value B, U function, blueprint callable, category, test functions, void, calculate value. Oh, and you have to give it um, some brackets on it, like that, to indicate that it's a function. Okay. Now, when you get a green underline in Visual Studio, it just means that you've got a function, but you haven't actually done anything with it. Like, there's no no source code for it, so it's not going to actually do anything. Um, so it's just giving you a little warning, like, hey, you haven't yet implemented this. So let's go ahead and implement it. So I'll calculate value. Uh, we're going to go into our thing here. We'll do it. You could do it before or after these events. Let's do it before. And in here, we're going to do void calculate uh, calculate value. And we're going to put in curly brackets to indicate that you're defining the function. And in here, we're going to look at value A and value B. So we can get value A. And we're going to add value A and B together. So uh, what I'm going to do here, actually, let's, um, let's do this as an int return. Actually. I'm going to change this to void to int 32. Should be OK. There you go. And just change this to match int 32. Um, and we're going to do return value A plus value B. And we'll get rid of these guys here. Um, we have to define what these values actually are to begin with. So we're going to go into here and do value A equals zero, value B equals zero as well. Um, and I did not define the type, did I? Yeah, I did. I don't know what can calculate value. Did I not define it right? Oh, yeah, it's not appearing because I didn't actually put this in. We have to put in a my test actor and then two colons there. That is basically saying you're going to find this function and all the relevant stuff is going to be part of this class. 
So you're just saying this is part of this class here. Um, okay, so that should return those two values there. So if I hit um, save all on this. Okay, so because it's a U function is blueprint callable, we should be able to access this in our blueprint. Let's go back into our project and hit the hot reload button. That should go through hopefully it was a green success. There you go. And we're going to go into our child blueprint class here. And now you can see you've got value A and value B up here working like this. And what we can do, we can do begin play. And we can search for our function. Calculate value. And you can see there, calculate value. Put that in. And you can see I don't have to give it any parameters because this is just going to read from these two values here. So let's do a print string like this. Print string that value. And on the class defaults, I could put in whatever one in here. So let's do 10 and 35. Okay. So we should expect to see 45 being printed out in the top corner. Oh, we don't have to actually put it in the scene. And push play. 45. Okay. So that means we can access that function inside our blueprint. Uh, and likewise, we can also access it elsewhere too. So if I was in my, say, level blueprint, I can get the reference to my test actor. And then from there, I can do calculate value as well. Okay, because I can access it from anywhere. As long as I've got a reference to it, I can access it. And that's because it's public. Okay, so let's talk about then how do we actually make it work as an event? So how do we make custom events work for our classes? So events in C++ are just functions, but with a slight bit of different uh, definition. So if I go into my class here, um, we go up to uh, blueprint callable. Uh, we'll just do um, another function here. We go u function. Blueprint callable. Uh, sorry, not callable. Uh, you want uh, implementable event. Right, right, Evelyn? Yeah. Uh, implementable event, and then the category that you want it to belong to. Category. I just realized I've done a typo. It might be test functions, not text functions. Let's fix that. Here, there we go. Uh, test functions, and that's not going to have any return. Okay, so uh, we're just going to call it void and say um, on value calculated. Okay, so it looks exactly the same as a normal function that you would put in, except that it doesn't have a return because events don't return anything, and we want it to be lit define it as an implementable event. Now there's also native events. We'll go through the difference of that in a second. But first of all, let's just make this output a test here. So we're gonna go and put this in here and we'll do void. And it's not gonna have anything in it. So we'll do void um, a my test actor and do on calculate uh, value calculate. There you go on and then we just put in that there okay leave it like that and hit save all that should all be okay and then we're going to go compile let's go back to our project hot reload uh build failed what well, a messed I've spelled something wrong. Very easy to do. Uh, category, there we go. So with events, we don't want to actually define this in our source file. We're just going to leave it undefined. Because what you're going to do is say you're going to let the blueprint class define what that event should do. So this works much like how a begin play would kind of work, essentially. Um, so you just define it as an implementable event uh, put a category and the name of it. Now it will be green underlined. That's totally okay. Uh, and void as well because events have to be void. So once you've done that, save it all and then go back to your project. And we'll do a quick hot reload. 
There we go. And wait for it to go green. Successfully linked patch. And there we go. So now if I go back to my custom class here, if I go to overrides, you'll find in my function overrides our new one on value calculate. Oh, wrong one. Get that right. On value calculate. There we go. And now, so this is an event that gets called um, on our blueprint. We can make this event do stuff and, and so forth. And because this is inside the C++ code, you can make other things call this thing here. So let's make our <coughs> calculate value function here call this. So if I put a print string in here, uh, we'll make it say hello and compile. And then I'm going to go back into my source file here and go to my source CPP file. And when I call calculate value, I'm doing return value A and B. Um, I want to just call my on value calculate. Like so. Okay. And then if I save that. And then compile the project again. Uh, hot reload. There we go. Finish patching. Any second, yeah, mom, you can do it. There we are. So now, my test actor, what should happen is on begin play, it's going to do this function here, which is going to trigger the C code to run this event. So it should say 45 because of this, and then hello. So if I go push play, put five and hello. Okay, so really cool, useful thing to have. Um, so what about if I want to pass through a value in here? Okay, well, what I'm going to do is going to go back to my header and source file, and inside my u function for on value calculate, I'll just put in here in the beside these brackets the parameters I want it to have. So here I want to output int32. And we'll give it a name of um, uh, value. Okay. And if I go to my test actor source file, this is now going to give me an error message because I'm not outputting a value here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to output value A and value B inside of that. And we'll return um yeah we do that and then we'll return we'll just return value as well we'll keep it there there you go Ooh, and semicolon always end the line with semicolon to end the command so this is going to do on value calculate and then pass through value a plus value b so if i do now save all go back to the project and do a hot reload <clears throat> there we are and if we go into our test actor now our event is now outputting a value which means i can just plug the value into there straight away and i can just remove this print string here so that's going to call that and then that's going to output this event file close push play and it's just print 45 there we go okay so that's how we get our events callable in our blueprint but what if we want it to have some default behavior that we can override if we so wish in our blueprint? Well, that's a different type of an event. You've got implementable event, and this one we're talking about now is a native event. I'm going to change this to native, and this is going to be a void uh, uh, function, and we're going to have no parameters in it. So we're going to take out the parameters, like so, and on value calculate, we'll do that. Now, the thing that's different between this and the previous one is that this one actually does need to have a definition for the function. So in here you can do int, uh, sorry, void a my test actor and colon and on value calculate int32 value. 
Okay. And that's going to be a little bit different now because it's now going to be doing a bit of code for us before we override it or extend it in our blueprint. So the thing that's going to be different here is uh, why is this up to? Oh yeah, because we ain't got. Um, sorry, I was very. Really, better we just took that out. Okay, so it's going to call this one. Now, on here you're going to see as well. We're going to get an error on the value calculate here. But now we're just going to take that out for a second and just leave it uh, with no parameters. Um, so on value calculate here. But if we want it to call this automatically for us, uh, we're going to add a suffix to this. Which is underscore implementation. And and that's what you gotta do. Now it will um now do the bit of code that we do in here. Uh, I'll do a print string. So do a print string, we'll go into this more detail next time, but um you go engine, G engine, sorry, access modifier, um not access modifier, the um arrow denotion. And we're going to do add on screen debug message. Um, the key for this will be minus one. The time to display will do 10.0 float seconds. Uh, color, we'll do F color uh, blue. And we'll do some text here. We're going to do um, hello. Okay, and we'll just put that on there. Okay, so. What's going to happen is, is when we call the uh, um, our calculate value function, that's going to call this event, and this event's going to run some default code. So I'll show you how this all works inside the engine. So at the moment, the only thing that's changed on our header is just a native event. You will get an error saying that we're not calling this event. That's fine. That's correct. Um, you just want this implementation here instead. So with that saved, we can go back to the engine. Hot reload. And wait for it to do its job. There we go. And now when I push play, it says hello. Um, so what I've done in my test here, all it's doing is just begin play, calculate values. And you can see we've got no other event going on. It's just doing that. And that's triggering the underlying event for calculating values. Which I'm going to get hello from it. But I can extend or override it as well. So if I wanted to go to functions here, I can go to override and choose on value calculate. And now I've overridden it. So now it won't do hello. It will do nothing. Yeah. But if I want to extend it, it works exactly the same as if you've done this before in Blueprint. You just right click on it and go add call the parent function. So now you're extending it because it's now going to do hello. And then whatever else we want to put in after the words on that blueprint. And there we go, we've now can access our variables and our functions and our events from a custom class. In the next episode, we're gonna go through some common functions that you guys are probably used to using in blueprints such as the print string uh, node and showcase how to actually accomplish these inside of a C++ class itself. Go and watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We find all my videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. I say thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.